Hey there, it's your pal Filthy. Welcome to another episode of Farming Simulator 22. We are back in Bloomfield, Canada. As a reminder, that is a mod that is a downloaded map. It is not part of the base game, but it's available on all platforms if you would like it. We've got a bunch of things to get done today, so let's get right into it. Alright, here we are back in Bloomfield. Uh, I made the day go by, so it's now October, as you can see by in the top right corner where it says October as well as some of the trees have started to turn brown, the leaves have started to fall. And the reason I did that is because I'm hoping to make... Hey, get, get out of here! These friggin' deer every time. But anyway, the reason I moved on to October is I was hoping that this grass would be long enough to cut. Uh, it has another growth stage after this, so I might not cut it today. But at, in any event, we're down to about twenty thousand dollars and that's that's not going to be enough to get any technology that's not going to be enough to to get a harvester or even a header for a harvester i'm pretty sure so what i want to do now or what i'd like to do today is we're going to do some contracts and then hopefully if i time things right we can do a contract that gives us access to a um, to a mower and a baler and stuff and then i will fast forward a month until this growth stage is ready to, to harvest at its full capacity, and then we'll we'll go from there. But, um, yeah, I also wanted to come over and check on my wheat field, see... Yeah, it, it's starting to come in. It, um, it's it got a while yet, but, yeah, it, it's there, it's ready to be... Or, not even ready, excuse me, but it's, it's, it's growing, it, it seems healthy, so let's head back to the truck. And what we're going to do is head into the menu here and go to this tab... It's, um, these are contracts you can do for complete strangers and, and make various amounts of money off of. Like you see here, this one is $25,000, whereas this one is just shy of 5000 And it all depends on the, the size of the field and how much work is going to go into it. Like, for instance, if you look at this, field 25, yes, it's $25,000, but if we come back up here to the map... Look at the size of field 25. That would take probably two, three hours real time of consecutive playing to get that field harvested. So we're not going to do that one. What we will do, though, is find a contract for bailing because that will provide us with a lawnmower to, that we can then use on our own stuff. So this one, it's about nine grand, and that will give us... The mower and everything uh, and the tether and what have you so we'll go ahead and accept that but I'm gonna if you look in the bottom there it says borrow items so I'm gonna click that because I don't have any of the items it would take to to move the bales and what have you so this makes it a bit easier and it, it gives you everything that you're gonna need to make these things happen so there we go I've accepted it and borrowed the items and now you see I'm here in the borrowed tractor get it rolling and to be honest i don't know where the field is that we're going to be harvesting so i'll turn on the compass and i, I try and avoid using the compass because it um you know just for a little bit more realism i i like to avoid using the the compass but this is my first real time uh taking on a task that doesn't require me going just back to my farm and my farm alone so there we are uh, and it looks like we're gonna have to take a right up ahead here but um, I'll probably just jump cut to when when we get there as opposed to forcing you folks to, to sit and watch me drive down especially since I believe this is on the other side of the map yeah uh, yes it's literally at the very top so uh, for you folks, it'll be just a split second. For me, it'll be the full drive up there. So sit tight. Okay, so we're uh, we're almost at the field here, so I thought I'd bring you in now. Uh, this is a bit of a tight turn, but we'll be all right. And then, yeah, this is field number nine right here. So I can turn off the compass again because I don't need that. Uh, we'll get this unfolded. Get this unfolded lower them both and similar to to the planting process you it, it's good to have things lined up but where this is different than the planting process is 
it kind of doesn't matter if you have the lawn mowers lined up properly because you're just cutting grass whereas with the planters you can create strips and it, it, it makes for awkward uh, angles and what have you when you're harvesting if you uh, if you don't plant correctly if you don't line things up just right whereas this it's literally just grass and we can go over it again and hopefully not hit this pole we did a little bit and we're running over signs but uh, no one said I was a good worker so there's that and um, part of the problem though that I'm, I'm now realizing is the front mower leaves a swath so when it comes time to to um, run this through the tether it's going to be a bit of a, a challenge in that you know it, it's creating a swath and then we're going to turn it into just widespread loose grass as opposed to a swath of grass so we'll see how that turns out. Uh, it's a bit of a problem, but what can you do? Um, and for what it's worth, well, while I'm working on this contract here, if you take on a contract, you won't be able to like just use this technology willy-nilly. Like I can't go cut the grass on the field next to me here. It, it's got to be the property owned. Uh, by the person it's got to be the property that's included in the contract uh, so you can't just go ahead and, and cheat and take a bunch of people's grass and then make a, a giant profit off of it and we'll uh, we'll get to a time lapse in a little bit here but I did want to go over some stuff before we do that and that uh, when cutting the grass like this you almost always will have some kind of profit because there's always a little bit more than what the contract requires uh, when you're when you have to make bales and uh, so that's part of why we did this and like I said at the beginning of the video I wanted to do this one because I'd like to use this mower for myself I'd like to use this mower for uh, for my own purposes before I end the contract and that's uh, that's kind of my last point I will make before we get into the time lapse that if you're wanting to follow my lead you want to do a contract that will help you because you can use the technology for it that's that's fine that's dandy that's great but please keep in mind that if you're doing that it the second you click uh, uh finish contract or I, I forget the exact word but the second you you're done with the contract and you click okay i'm done the technology disappears and it, it goes back into the possession of whoever owns it so in, in this case what i'm going to be doing is i won't be clicking accept on or i won't be finalizing the contract until i've had the chance to to harvest my field or to cut my field as well and then i'm hoping that that will give us the opportunity to obviously cut our own grass but it will also kind of set us up that when the time comes I, I might be able to afford like a, a baler or like I can get I can likely get a piece of technology that's needed for the farm based on the money I'm going to be making with this and potentially selling uh, the excess grass that comes with this contract. Uh, but that's about it for now. We're uh, we're gonna go into a bit of a time lapse here, and if it's if it's taking forever, I will cut to the end. But uh, I definitely want to try and time lapse this because, if I'm being completely honest, the grass cutting process in this game is a big factor of why I like this game so much. I find this particular job one of the most cathartic there things you can do in this game. But uh, that's it for now, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Thanks. Okay, here we are coming back in. Uh, we're just going to finalize 
well, not finalized, but we're going to just go through and collect some of the, uh, the random one-off pieces here and make this a bit better. Because, again, the, uh, the idea behind doing contracts like this is that you're setting yourself up to make some income on top of the contract, uh, because there will be extra bales, potentially, and in that scenario, any extra goes right into your pocket. So, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely worth going over and, and hitting the extra little spots to make sure that you're, you're kind of making as much money as you can while doing this contract because especially starting out you know I, I know that the bank account says twenty thousand dollars but that will not go far i can probably buy like a maybe a baler maybe a trailer like i can buy probably one item but that leaves me high and dry and i have nothing left in the account so again the idea is really to to make as much money and maximize profit while doing contracts like this and and you know what it's kind of fun to to be doing the grass cutting in my opinion like i i enjoy doing this particular task uh and i don't know if i said it while we were planting the grass in the first episode but uh grass will always grow back basically you just have to fertilize it every couple seasons or every couple months excuse me and then it will just keep coming back. It's a, uh, it is a good idea to occasionally, like, plow it up and then re-drill it, replant it, to get like the the full effect. But generally speaking, grass will always take care of itself, which is pretty nice because, as far as I know, it's the only plant or the only uh, crop that you don't have to con replant every time. You could literally just leave it. Okay, so that's. Like there's there's little spots left here, but and that's fine. But we're uh, we're not going to worry about that uh, too much. And um, and again, we're going to take this over to our farm now because, like I said, I want to try and take advantage of the fact that I'm renting this technology, that I've got this technology accessible to me. So we're going to take this to our property and drop it off at the the farm, and then we'll go back and get the tether and the, the wind rower and we'll, we'll make our way back down to this field. Okay, so here we are back at our property and um, I guess it doesn't really matter where we place this stuff. What does matter is the deer running out in front of my moving tractor, but uh, they're, they're kind of anuses like that. They will run in front of your whatever it is you're using. They don't seem to care all that much. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop this stuff on the other side. Not that it matters all that much, but I like the idea of um, of leaving things in a position that makes it easy to, uh, to get it again. And when it comes time to cut this grass, I can literally just line it up, hit attach, and then be off to the races. So that's kind of why I did it that way. And... Uh, yeah, now we'll we'll head over to the shop and get the uh, the tether for uh, for the contract field. And for those of you that don't know, uh, a, from what I understand, a tether is a piece of technology that allows farmers to to turn up grass and hay and what have you. But like it, it turns up the product to to help it dry out to make it easier and quicker at turning into hay. So that's what the contract is asking for, is for hay bales, so you have to tet it so it, it dries out and actually turns into hay, because otherwise it will just be grass bales, and then you can potentially uh, wrap them and, and ferment them and turn them into silage, which is uh, quite profitable and something we will likely be doing with our grass field in the future, but for now we're, we're just obligated to fulfill this contract and they are asking for hay, so that's why we're doing things the way that we're doing them, and that's why we're we're gonna come get this uh, this hay bit or the the tether, excuse me. Okay, here we are at the store. And I know which one is the tether because uh, in my personal file and my just for fun file, I have both of these pieces of technology, but if you're ever wondering, if you're ever curious, you can go into the uh, the vehicle menu here and you can look at the different tools. Uh, let's go ahead and find the 
the tether you can see here like this is what I've just picked up and you can see what they look like and then be like oh that's the one that I have so like you can see both pieces that we've borrowed on this menu and that's if you're confused just look at the menus and, and don't be ashamed to to look to see which one is which because you know for instance this wind rower is by coon uh and as is this tether so you know from a, a paint scheme standpoint a, a name brand standpoint they they seem similar so it, it, i can certainly get why people would be confused when they're when they're just starting out also i'm gonna put this back down because i had a thought this is something that i learned from watching someone else's farming simulator video that you can put you can't really use the, the tether on the front of it but you can carry it on the front so i can literally lift this up and granted in real life this is probably kind of dangerous to be having something that obstructs your view this heavily but we're, we're trying to be expeditious with our time. We're trying to be quick. So that's why I'm going to take both at the same time as opposed to taking one, then taking it back, then taking the other. So it's a little tip and trick for you. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to jump to when we get to the field, and, I'll, and then I'll bring you back in. Okay, here we are coming up to the corner just before the field. The, I think... The first thing that we're going to do is kind of put ourselves in a position that we're parking the wind rower off out of the way because, in my experience anyway, it's pretty easy to to hit things and run over things and it just it causes more stress than it's worth. So that's why I do that. And we're gonna put the tether facing this way and put it on the ground thank goodness it didn't fall over because I've, I've had that happen in my in my f just for fun file where the the tether will fall over and then i've had to literally buy a forklift just to get it upright again and get it off the ground in order to attach it so that's something to keep in mind when you're using things like like tethers like wind rowers that uh, they're not necessarily going to behave nicely if you just detach them. It's always a better idea to lower them and then detach them, unlike what I just did there. Anyway, let's get this rolling, and I'll show you a little bit of this. I, I for sure want you guys to see what the tatting process is like. Um, it does cause your, your tractor to go a little bit funky in its driving, but uh, I wonder if that's just a matter of, like, it's using a little bit more torque, a little bit more horsepower than this tractor has or what have you. Like, I'm sure someone that's smarter and more aware of the dynamics and the mechanics of this game can explain why that happens, but um, I just kind of roll with it, and I'll always, like I said with the planting, I'm, I'm always keen on doing a bit of overlap. Like, uh, you can see there that the right side of the tether is, or the, the very last uh, mixer, I guess? Whatever that would be on the, the tether itself. Anyway, I, I always try and hang that off of the field a little bit so that, um, again, I, I know that I rather have a bit of overlap and that the, the technology is working right up until the edge, like literally up until the edge as opposed to not overlap and the next thing you know you'll you'll do a lap of the field and it's only partially done or not even partially done but uh, you'll do a lap and then see that there's like a, a strip going along the the outside edge so here we are back having done a loop so I'll just um, from here we're gonna do a bit of a time lapse and we'll uh, we'll show you the majority of this field and, and similarly if this takes too long then we'll, we'll cut it down but this field's pretty small so i suspect that we won't need to be doing a, just a jump cut to the end so uh yeah just sit back relax and enjoy the time lapse
Okay, we're not quite done yet, but uh, since this is just the last little bit, and I feel like I've been doing time lapses out the wazoo this episode, and I, I plan to be doing a couple more, I figured I should jump in and, and take the opportunity to talk with you guys. Um, not 100% sure what the, what the next video will be, but I know that I want to start working towards building up our supply of, of technology, working up to get some bailers and stuff like that so I guess it'll all depend on the kind of money that we can make doing contracts and and to be honest the next episode will likely be more contract work but I'm gonna try my darndest to continue to do jobs that we haven't seen continue to do things that we haven't seen so if these videos ever get repetitive just let me know and I can kind of try and pivot and I can work off screen to try and set uh, set this up so it's not as repetitive like I, I don't mind doing a bit of grinding off camera in order to make enough money that we can start an episode by buying a new piece of technology or whatever but um, we'll all see how things unfold I, I know that I've uh, I've really enjoyed making these so far uh, and just while I'm talking about the content and, and the fun I've had with it, the uh, the first episode, episode one, which is the first, obviously, uh, it reached over 100 views in just a week of being in existence. And, you know, in, in the big picture, in the uh, the content creator ethos, that's, that's nothing. That's minuscule compared... To the likes of you know uh, my favorite content creator Rad Brad who gets 15 20,000 views in a matter of minutes of a video being published and mine took a week to get to 100 but regardless my my reason for bringing that up is not to brag is not for pats on the back but rather I I hope that if you're one of the people that tuned in and watched that video if you're one of the over 100 views at this point thank you i've jumped over to to my tractor because i wanted to try something when i first started wind rowing the the grass at the other field it said something to the effect of tools are for contract use only so i wanted to see am i even going to be able to to cut my own field with this or or is it going to get mad at me so we'll just get set up over in a little patch I just I really just want to see if this is a thing because if I can't use this technology on yeah see it's um it will not cut the grass because this is reserved for contract work so with that said we're gonna just go ahead and dump that there. We'll uh, we'll park the the new Holland here for now, and we'll come back to this in a bit. So we'll jump back to this, and uh, I guess that means that I can also leave the windrower just here, since we won't be using it on on our own fields. Okay, we'll just drop that off, and. I'm not going to cut to the shop just yet, because I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more. And, um, yeah, I think that that kind of changes my game plan, because I, if I can't use the technology that I've borrowed in order to use my own field, that means that I'm going to have to buy and or lease the mowers and what have you. So we'll just set this on cruise control we'll probably drop the speed to like oh well 30 seems reasonable while i look at the shop here let's just make sure i'm driving a straight line how much let's make sure i'm still going in a straight line here and um yeah we'll keep it in first person for now and so let's go find ourselves a mower which can be found here mowers so i can in theory, I can get a mower, and let's see how much a forage wagon costs. They're about 30000 but as we learned, we can rent that. So, yeah, I think that that's what we'll do, is we'll just get... We'll buy a small mower to begin with. We'll buy 
that cheap one and we'll lease that forage wagon and we'll just sell the the grass as is for our own personal consumption or for our own personal profit rather and uh and then use or and then hope that this contract gives us a little bit of extra income as well but if it doesn't it doesn't and that's not the end of the world we'll just have to to figure that out after the fact okay that's about all i have for you for right now so we'll, i'll see you over at the shop and here we are coming up to the shop there's the gas station again which means the the shop is next um I'm, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, that I can't use that technology on on my farm, but it is what it is. I think that that's a way for the creators of this game to kind of prevent people from cheating and, and taking advantage, because you could... You can essentially use technology for free in that sense, because... Until you click finish contract, it will just sit there. Like, even if you've done the job, you've moved on your months later, it until you click done, it, it won't register that it's done, and you can just hold on to that technology forever and ever and ever. And unlike leasing, if you've borrowed the technology for a contract, there is no daily fees, there's no hourly fees. You just have it until you don't. So it, it certainly makes sense that they would find a way to prevent people like myself from from being able to take advantage of that because as of right now I don't own any of the the stuff we're using here. Like I, I have a tractor obviously, but I don't have the baler, I don't have the wind rower, I don't have the tether, I don't have the mower even. So I can certainly see how people would take advantage of that and just take a contract that has all of those things and then just never click finish on the contract because you can, if if you can keep using it, then you can keep making money off of it. Like for instance, I'm not sure how much money my, my grass field will make us, but the way I'm seeing it, you know, as much as this contract is $8,000, if I'm holding on to that technology and making like $1,500, $2,000 per, per cut of my grass, then I can just keep making money, keep making money until I've made more than what the contract is worth and just never click accept and you, you have the use of this technology for free. So I certainly get why they've, uh, they've prevented you from having that loophole and I think that that's relatively recent, if I'm being completely honest. I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not certain of that, but I feel like that was something that they added in an update, because I seem to recall when I first purchased this game being able to to use a stranger's technology on your stuff if you had a, if you had a contract that had access to that, but uh, it's entirely possible I'm, I'm not remembering that correctly. We're, we're almost back at the field here, so I'll probably just uh, keep you in instead of jumping to the end here. And plus, I wanted to showcase the scenery a little bit. It's a, it's a very nice map. All of the maps in Farming Simulator 22 are nice, but I like this one because it's uh, like it it's flat, which makes sense, but also like it's, it's vibrant. You know, you can see mountains, you can see wind farms you can see forest and stuff and a lot of that stuff is outside of the map and it's literally just aesthetic but it's still nice that it's there and it makes it feel a bit more dynamic that these things exist and that you know the i don't know how many of my viewers actually live in canada but uh like i live in ontario which is a province in canada for those of you watching in america if you're not aware of uh, what Canada is and what it has to offer, but um, anyway, I live in Ontario, and this, I could see this easily being like a town in Ontario, but as I learned recently, let's see if I can't find my license plate on the front of the tractor here, where is it? Oh, this tractor doesn't have a license plate, okay, well, let's just make sure that I'm not imagining things. 
nope, there's no license plate. Anyway, I, I learned, and I will show you when we get back to my field, or to my farm, that uh, this Bloomfield Canada map is set in, uh, in New Brunswick, which is kind of fun. So I'm not... I've never been to New Brunswick, I've never lived in New Brunswick, so I'm not sure how accurate the, uh, the, um, the look is, but to me, I could see this being a town in Canada, so that's, that's always fun for, for me, and, um, let's go ahead, and I think I've turned on auto drop now, because I just had to turn that off, or I just had to drop that bail myself, but, uh, in, in a worst case scenario, I will open the help menu again to see if I've got automatic drop on. Not that it makes much of a difference, it's just kind of a convenience thing. Yes, I did turn on automatic drop. Uh, and like I was saying, it, it's a convenience thing more than anything that uh, you can just literally get off the gas and then wait for the bale to hop out as opposed to you have to kick the bale out, then close the baler again, and, and it's just... For me, the only time that you wouldn't want automatic drop is when uh, instances like that, where it uh, it's automatically dropping, and if you're not paying attention, then it um, then it just you can kind of screw yourself over where you're dropping it in a position that's not very helpful to anyone. Hey there, it's me again. Uh, welcome back. So, earlier in the video I was talking about uh, not being sure what we will do in the next video, and just based on how how time-consuming this has become, uh, I believe that the next video will be sorting out our own grass. I think I'm going to call it quits at the end of this task here, because uh, one thing we will learn as we get into transporting the bales because I don't have a trailer because I don't have uh, a bale spike or a, a forklift or anything like that transporting the bales is a bit of a pain in the butt and I know that that will be very time consuming so what I will do likely is we'll end the video once I get the bales transported or even if that's becoming a bit of a process we'll end the video with a couple of them transported and then finish off that task in the subsequent or the subsequent I don't know if that's the right word in the follow-up video in episode four so yeah like I like I continue to say I, I want to be transparent as I'm going through this I want to vocalize what my intentions are what my plans are because Again, I, I appreciate the people that are taking the time to watch this, and, you know, I don't... I don't necessarily have a plan of, of what I want to do each episode, but I certainly have an idea, and I wasn't realizing until I got that message that I had already recorded an hour's worth that, um, that this process is taking much longer than I thought it would. There we go. Okay. So now that we've got this done, I will take the, the baler and put it off to the side. Again, keeping in mind that um, as you're driving around, it's a little bit of a, a pain in the butt if you're running into things. I'll turn this off, raise it up. So I'm just going to park this off to the side. And again, as I've said a couple times now, because this is borrowed technology, you can just leave it uh, wherever you feel like and it will stay there uh, and I need to take this to Johnson's Farmer's Market so let's open the map and find out where Johnson's Farmer's Market is I would assume that it's somewhere down here but uh, you know what they say about people who assume fast food restaurant cereal factory bakery lots of good stuff around here but is any of it Johnson's Farmer's Market it doesn't really seem like it. No, it doesn't. So, is Johnson's Farmer Market here? No, that's the sawmill. That's our farm. So, perhaps the Farmer's Market is up this way. 
Grain Mill, Debris Crusher, Lime Station, Crawford. Okay. Where? Yo, Biogas, Electric Charging Station. Vehicle Shop, Biomethane, Spinnery. Okay, apologies, folks. Uh, I'm just going to cut to when we find the, uh, the farmer's market and st start getting over there. Well, of course, it's literally the last thing I... Or the last and only thing I didn't check in this bottom corner. Um, and one thing I will note is that it's kind of a pain in the butt to, to transport bales on the um, this fork thing that it, we've been given. So I will give it a try. And if it's being problematic, what I might do is lease a trailer and then find a way to just kind of dump them on the trailer. So what I'm going to do is just dump this here and hope for the best. Uh, and then we'll go into here, turn off the help menu again, go into the shop. And if you look at this here, uh, this allows us to, it will pick up the bales on your behalf. So how much does it cost at least? Okay, it's digging into our profits a little bit, but to be honest, I I feel like it will be worth it in the sense that trying to use that bale fork thing is just an absolute nightmare. And in my own like just for fun file, I use those those trailers with the loading arm ninety percent of the time, and the other ten percent is using a, a telehandler with a bale fork to to load things on because those stupid arm thingies that they loan you for these contracts. Again, I'm sure there are people that, are, that use them and use them well, but I am not one of those people. I continue to struggle to use them because they don't make sense to me. I'm not sure how they expect you to pick bales up when you can't get them wide enough for bales. And I just have a laundry list of complaints in using those things, so that's why I don't use them. Um, so this trailer is likely a bit more than what this tractor is supposed to be hauling. Like you see, it's it's a pretty large trailer, but it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to to moving bales around and that the, the arm there you see sticking up, it folds down and it will pick up the bales and then automatically stack them in and push them down the trailer as you add more and more bales. So this trailer is a godsend if you're going to be playing this game if you want to get bales of your own. I suggest getting a, a bale trailer early on, but please keep in mind that you, you um, this one will only take uh, circular bales and there's a trailer that will only take square bales. And then you can get just like a, a flat trailer with no loading arm that will take both, obviously. But uh, that's primarily because you're the one stacking it on there. So if you, early on, if you get a baler that does circular bales, you'll want this one. Uh, and then if you get square bales, there's another trailer that takes that. Um, for me personally, I, I prefer primarily to get uh, square bales because... As I said when I was placing the uh, the greenhouse in the previous episode, I'm I'm a bit OCD when it comes to the placement of things, and I find it's significantly easier to stack and place square bales, and that you can literally pile them high in a shed, you can pile them high in your yard, and not have to worry about them rolling around. Whereas the circular bales, you can you almost have to stack them in such a way that they're that like they're leaning on each other and it's I find they're a bit more problematic to deal with they're a bit harder to deal with so that's why I I prefer square bales and it's all kind of personal preference whatever you prefer is, is obviously the best way forward but that's my explanation for why I prefer square square bales and that it's a bit easier to stack it's nicer to stack in my opinion and once more here we are back coming up to this uh, curve, which is just before our field. Uh, not gonna lie, I thought that curve would be a little bit harder to handle. I'm kind of glad it wasn't. But uh, here we are at the field, and you'll see now 
why I love this trailer so much compared to what we were just trying to do. You saw I was farting around with that stupid bale fork thing that it has, and then here, you just have to get it within like a close proximity, and it grabs the bale no problem. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you can fit about 14 on 14 bales on here, but that, uh, that might be the square uh, bale trailer that I'm thinking of. And you see, like, it automatically raises up and stacks them nicely for you. It's just, this trailer is a game changer if you're going to be doing grass work. Okay, so that is 18 bales. We've still got plenty of room. Uh, but with that, the, the whole field is done, and again, we, we probably could have gotten another couple bales, probably one or two more bales if we cut all of the grass accordingly, but you can see it's, it's all little runoff pieces and, and stuff like that, and I, I find doing things like that, especially because it's a contract, becomes very monotonous, because you don't have to 100% complete something in order for the the contract to be finished you i'm not sure of the exact uh mathematics i'm not sure of the exact algorithm at which it works but you just kind of have to sit hit a certain percent and it classifies it as done like even when you're fertilizing fields and what have you uh if you're doing a contract to fertilize you could have like a, a fairly wide strip right down the center of the the field but as long as you've hit like a certain percentage of the field then it, it calculates that as entirely done and then as soon as you click finish you'll see the the state of the field change to completely covered as opposed to covered less a strip it's it's like the 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 game is lenient in that you don't have to be 100% on when doing contracts. Okay, and as you can see there, there's a big green beacon of light in the sky. That is because I tagged Johnson's Farmer's Market when I was looking at the map, because that's where I'm supposed to take these bales, and I didn't know where it was, so I wanted to mark it on the map to make it easier to get here. Uh, have I gotten there yet? No, not yet. And it's just a little bit further down the road here. We keep going. This is, a um, this is something to consider too with this map I guess is that it's um, like it's very easily laid out or like the, the map is easy to figure out but it, everything's kind of far apart um, I believe if I'm not mistaken the bales have to go on this side I could be wrong, and I hope not, because that will suck for picking them up again. There you go. Yes, that is the right spot to dump all that stuff. So, uh, if you looked in the, in the top right corner there, you'll see that it's showing sold bail, sold bail, sold bail. That only happened because at a certain number of bales the game registered that the contract was complete, so anything after that was just profit for for me. Uh, and we've jumped back here because, frankly, I don't really want to drive back home. But uh, before we call it a day, before we end the video, uh, we'll come back into the screen, go down to the contracts, and then you see there's square to collect. So now I can get that and there's the eight thousand dollars or eight thousand six hundred and thirty seven to be accurate uh but and before we go ahead and and quit get rid of this return it and again it was more money than we should have been spending but anyway uh thank you all for joining me uh before we get out of here we're gonna scare off that deer again get out of here bambi i just wanted to go double check to see if our tomatoes had uh, grown at all. I don't think they have because it tends to take them about two two days worth. Yeah, so we're good there. Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's about it for today. Thank you all for joining me and I'll catch you on the flip side. See you around.